Okay, we'll see this game between Miguel Najdor versus Alberto Pogelman, and it was played in Mar del Plata International Open in 1967. So let's see the game. Uh, Miguel Najdor starts with C4. So we have English opening. It can be transposed, but afterwards. So knight f6 and now knight c3, e6. So both are just trying to develop their pieces, control the center. Yes, d4. Normally after c4, if you play d4 is good. You control the whole, you know, center properly. And uh, the opponent is also trying to do the same. Opponent is not playing from the side. He is also uh, trying to control the center. You can see the center pawn is moved. The knight is going towards center. And now he moved the bishop. Bishop b4. Pinning the knight. Okay. So uh, it's a good idea if you pin the knight. Because uh, then you can attack more on that. Or whatever this knight is doing. He cannot do that properly. Uh, like suppose if white would like to move this, he cannot do it now because then black can simply take it as the knight is pinned. So uh, bishop b4, then e3, e3 simply giving support number one reason. Number two reason opening the bishop. Now this reason is important. Okay. So you have support plus this bishop is open now. So he can move the bishop, he can move the knight and then he can do castle. So that's the idea. D6. After that, bishop D3. So the bishop is very good on this long, uh, good diagonal. Uh, knight C6. Development of this knight. And now knight G E2. Okay, normally we move the knight towards center. But sometimes uh, you can even play on the other side, like this side. Okay, there are different reasons. Here, the reason is to give one more support to this. So, in case if the opponent captures the knight, you don't have to take with this and make the double pawn. You can take with the knight as well. Okay, here, uh, sometimes the reason can be, you know, if black player can uh, attack with the bishop, one more reason could be, you know, uh, to move the pawn high. But here, that case is not here as the pawn is blocking the bishop. But still, the main idea over here is to give support to this. Second, maybe you can move the knight somewhere else where you would like to move. But let's see. So e5, uh, to open the bishop. Now he would like to come ahead and you know pin the knight. But of course, f3 can come. Uh, he is attacking here now. There are two attacks, two supports. So it's OK for white. There is no problem, at least right now. But uh, white played this d5, attacking the knight, taking a tempo, extra move, you can say. So uh, he has to move the knight or he has to do something you know, where he will not lose this knight somehow. So bishop cross c3 and then knight cross c3. And now he moved this knight. So knight e7, saved the knight. The knight can come out on the other side, okay? He can bring it here. He can move the bishop here now. There is a support. So f4 attacking this pawn. And uh, afterwards, the rook will be having the open file. That's one more idea after being castle. So e cross f4, e cross f4, and then short castle. Again, white also did the same short castle. And now knight d7. Okay, what is the idea of this? The main idea, see, normally we don't move the knight here behind because this knight was uh, giving support to this important pawn which is already attacked. And there could be, there can be, you know, more attacks can be uh, there with the queen, even with the rook, rook can also come. So then why would you like to move the knight behind? The main idea, you can say, is to push this pawn on f5 to stop this bishop's attack. That is the main idea. After f5, maybe he can play this again. So that's the main idea. After knight d7, queen c2. So white said, yes, this is a weakness. Weak pawn, I already have one attack. Let's make one more attack and uh, create more weakness because now black has to move some pawns over here to stop that. 
and uh, this was the plan for black anyway so he said yes let's do this because if you play g6 then the problem is these two squares will become very weak so that's not a good idea instead this is better plus you are stopping this because if you play g6 this pawn could come ahead and give more problems so f5 then bishop e3 continuously developing the pieces this bishop would come here and attack on this side afterwards knight f6 yes he wanted to get the knight back on this side only the problem was you know this was blocking the pawn and that's why he had moved there but for that he had to wait two more which is not that good white got those two extra moves because of that moving the knight behind and coming forward not a good idea anyway so rook a1 okay white got his last piece uh developed so now the bishop can move and the rook can attack very nicely now here a6 okay uh, the idea is to stop this knight from coming here one idea second idea to give support to the pawn so he can come ahead and give attack after a6 bishop f2 because you don't want to block this and if we move the bishop d4 uh, yeah that would be okay no problem but maybe you would like to move on the other side as well okay to attack from here uh, so let's see why did he play bishop f2 because uh, let's see if he plays over here bishop d4 what was the problem uh, one problem was you know c5 could come and attack and then you have to either play you know bishop cross f6 or you have to go back or even you can do this but then this is not that good because the uh, pawn is looking very nice right now you don't want to lose this pawn center pawn for a side pawn so that's why this move he has not played bishop d4 because mostly for uh, black would have played c5 and you have to move back so he said no if you want to go back then why should you waste move and why should you allow extra move to the opponent so he moved bishop f2 directly now rook f7 uh, to give extra support so the queen can go somewhere else and uh, this rook is giving support to this side as well and um, yeah so the queen can also join the defense on this side if you want uh, bishop h4 okay bishop is coming forward to attack bishop d7 slowly steadily would like to get his pieces out like this like this he's planning to do that knight e2 see this knight is going toward this side very nice square so he's planning to go on this side to attack on these squares uh, because from here he couldn't go here he couldn't go anywhere so it was not a good knight and you should use all the pieces and that's why he's doing this his plan is to move either here or even on the other side he can shift the knight and attack on these squares so that's what that also you can do c5 first he said no i will not allow you to come forward over here this is a good square i would not like you to move the knight there so he made attack on d4 then what to do knight g3 yes so knight g3 and now there are one two three attacks on this pawn and how many supports only one two supports so this pawn is in trouble you have to give extra support and that's what black did black played g6 gave support but then you force him to move this so what happened after that uh, black had created a few weaknesses now this is a weak diagonal and that's what white has achieved okay by giving pressure to some uh, weak pawns you are forcing him to move some pawns and now there are some more weaknesses that's what you are supposed to do so now how to take advantage you uh, use all the pieces okay now this one they are doing something this is doing something this is okay but this one is not doing that much because this is uh, you know on the file which uh, is blocked by the pawn so how to uh, use this what to do and he thought i should get the rook on this file so that i can do something from the open file so you have to move this rook and he played this rook a2 idea rook f e1 and then both the rooks can attack they can attack on all these squares so uh, that's a good idea okay playing uh, rook f1 after that king g7 so king g7 the idea is of course 
uh, giving extra support to this knife. If there will be attack, then uh, it's good to have more supports. Second reason, now you can move either queen or knight over here, one of the knights, and uh, then it's good. Okay, that's the plan. Rook f1, yes, as per the plan, yes, for the rook over there. Now, this knight has to move, otherwise there are problems. You have to keep defending him again and again. He will increase, the white will increase the attack. You have to keep giving more supports. White pieces will be active. Black pieces will be passive. So, it's not a good idea to keep that piece there for a long time. Uh, so, knight e g8. You move the knight. Now, there is no problem. See, if you have any problem, what to do? Try to solve that problem. Just don't keep that problem on the board for a longer time. So, he played that. Queen c3. Okay, you have to just get the pieces on the best squares where they can go on more squares, where they can attack more. And that's what he's doing. Okay, the queen was here. It was not attacking that much because this diagonal queen was attacking, which was already attacked by the bishop. So, the queen had to do something and that's why queen c3 is a good move. h6 was played. Uh, to control this and to make space for this king so that he can move that king and then the knight will not be pinned because right now if you see the knight is badly pinned okay uh, how see this this one and this one so the knight has big problem both the sides uh, this side the knight is pinned by the queen against the king and this side, the bishop is pinning the knight against this uh, queen. So, problems. Okay. So, after h6, now white has played knight f1. So, he thought about this knight. This knight was not doing that much. He couldn't move anywhere over here. So, he thought what to do. Now, he is shifting the knight somewhere else. Okay. You have to uh, keep thinking, okay, where should I move this piece? Uh, where he can do something better. And that's what he thought and he thought, okay, this knight can go somewhere else. Or you can say that uh, this pawn is also blocked by that. Or you would like to move the bishop on the other side, which was blocked by the knight. Because after h6, even I you know he is preparing to play afterward g5 or something. So, uh, yes, you want to have some squares to move the bishop. Let's see what happens after that. So, king h7 and then queen c2 again. So, if the king is here, the queen is good here. And if the king is here, then what is the use of this king, queen here? And that's why he thought, I'll get the queen here. Now, see, both the uh, pieces are attacking on this diagonal where the king is there. And now, maybe he can try to play g4 and attack on this. So that's the plan. Queen c7, removing this pin. But then, knight e3, already he's increasing more and more pressure. G4 is coming for sure. Why didn't he play this right now? Because then the knight could capture right now. He, could, he, he would not capture with the pawn because then bishop could capture this. But then knight was there. Now it's not pinned. And that's why you need a support. And that's why he played knight e3. So now next move is planning to move here. If the knight capture, captures, then you can capture with the knight. And then if the pawn takes, then you can take this pawn with the bishop. That's the plan. So, knight h5. Okay. Yeah. So, if you attack this, I'll take this pawn. That's what the plan is. He's, met, he's going to capture the pawn and attack the other pieces. Uh, what to do? Don't allow him to take it. So, rook f1. Because now these two rooks are not doing anything special here. So, you have to move and uh, do something on this file. Uh, rook f8 gave uh, another support to this. There are more attacks, so you need more support. See, one, two, three attacks. Fourth attack will come, so he's already preparing for that. And that's why he has also given. So, the game is going on this F5 square. You should know where the game is going. And White said, okay, no problem. I'll still play G4. See, his king is quite safe. So, you know, he doesn't have to think more about his king because this side black cannot attack. So, that's a very good thing for White. Okay, this side... Uh, the rooks will take time to attack. So, he's fine. He can even shift the king over here. So, the king is safe. And that's why you can move and, you know, try to open this and then you can attack on the opponent's king. So, when you are attacking, you should also see if your king is not getting exposed badly. Okay. Uh, otherwise, you can have problems. So, some beginners, they do this mistake. 
they try to attack on the opponent's king without seeing what will happen to their own king. So that's not a good idea. If your king will be in trouble, you have to be careful about it. So g4 is okay. And then there is attack on this knight, which has to be moved uh, if you don't want to capture. Because if you capture, then bishop cross g6 is a very bad uh, threat. You can't do that. After that, there is a big problem. Uh, you are losing more points. So you can't do that. And that's why he played knight g7. He saved the knight. And now rook g2. The idea is simple. You want to open this file. Before that, he said, I'll get the rook on that file. So that I can attack, I can give threats very well. Uh, queen c8, because um, to give support. Okay, one more support now to this pawn. And uh, yeah, he's just uh, getting more and more pieces on, uh, you know, this side to do something. White is also doing the same. He's also doing the same. Now, before doing anything, White said, I'll prepare. Okay, I'll not uh, directly open. Because if you, uh, you know, attack immaturely, you will not get what you want. So if you have time, you use it properly. So king h1, what is he doing? He would like to move the rook here and afterwards he would open. So before opening the, you know, everything, the files, the diagonals, what you have to do? You have to uh, get ready for that. You have to get ready. All these pieces should be at the right place to attack on the, uh, you know, weaknesses of the opponent. So, he's getting this rook here, okay, you'll see that. So, knight f6, black is saying, okay, I'll get my pieces ahead to do something. Now, he's giving threat because if you don't do anything, white will just play alone. You have to try to do something. You cannot allow the opponent to play alone. Like, it's like, you know, one player is uh, running in the race. The other player is just watching. He's just not running. So, that's not a good thing. You also have to run. Though you are little behind, it's fine. You have to keep running. So that you will get a chance, okay, or you will get uh, some sort of, you know, uh, opportunity or chance to finish the race. Or sometimes even you can uh, beat the opponent, okay, you can even win. So that's why knight f6, getting a piece ahead to do something on g4, you can say. Rook f g1, as I said, is getting all the pieces at the right place before uh, striking before uh, taking a break. So, rookie 7 now, okay, the rook is coming forward, making attack on this knight. What to do? G cross f5. So, he's sacrificing his knight. See, knight has no support. He's saying, okay, you can take that. I don't mind. Because I'm going to open this side. So, he said, very good. I got something at least. So, rook cross e3. And then, if you take with the pawn, he will simply move the king and then it will be difficult to attack. So, because the pawn will be blocked. I mean, uh, the other, the file will be blocked by the pawn and you cannot attack that much. Even the diagonal is blocked. So, yeah, white said, no, I don't want to take with the pawn. I'll keep it here and I'll take with this. Now, there is a threat. Rook cross G6 has captured. Now, the threat is this. Rook cross G7 check. So, what to do? You have to save the knight. Either you move this knight or you move this knight and give support. So, he said, yes, I'll move. This one, knight g h5, he saved it. He gave support to it also because there were now two attacks. He had only one support. He had to give support to this. And then queen g2. Again, this file is open. So now he had to attack from this file. So get all the pieces on that. Knight g3. Okay, he blocked this. He said, okay, I will block the attack. And if you, uh, you cannot take with the queen and that's what he wants. But here now what happened? He captured with the bishop. So bishop cross g3. Why not with the pawn? Because if you take with this, then the file is blocked. You don't want to block this file. You want to attack with your stronger pieces. And that's why I took with the piece and not with the pawn. Understand this. The beginners, they do this mistake. They take with the pawn, they close the file. The important file, you are attacking. This is your highway. If you want to reach the enemy side, you need this highway open. You cannot close your own uh, highway, right? And that's why bishop cross g3, then bishop cross f5, and now bishop h4, very important move. Okay, the idea you can see, opening the highway again, and now the threat is on this side. Yeah, the bishop is also giving some threats, and uh, the uh, important thing is the queen rook, they are now open, and they can attack uh, very well on this king. King is in trouble. He has to do something. 
So he played knight h5, but uh, here white had this very good move and he played this rook cross h6, sacrifice. And guess what? Here the opponent resigned because after this move, now there is a mate in two moves. King cross h6 is forced. You cannot uh, say no to that. And uh, after this, there is a mate in two. So how to do that? Let's see. Queen g5 check. King h7. And now queen cross h5 checkmate. 